Hello everyone. Welcome to our second video lesson on high school algebra. We will continue our discussion on set. Set means collection. Not just any collection, a well-defined collection of distinct objects. Being well-defined, having distinct objects, these are some of the rules that make set a special collection. In fact, there are nine such rules called zermelo frankel axioms. It took about 50 years for mathematicians to come up with these rules. 50 years of struggle, debates, counterexamples. And finally, this became an outstanding intellectual achievement when mathematicians realized that they have discovered rules that are like fundamental building blocks capable of constructing the entire world of math so fundamental that they became the grammar of modern mathematics, the way letters form words or notes form music. The formal presentation of these rules are beyond our scope here, but we will take a practical approach to introduce set theoretic operations so that you can work with sets correctly following rules. Okay, let's see how to do that. Okay, so let's first do a quick recap of what we discussed last time regarding set. So we said that um, A is a set when A is a collection of, uh, well-defined collection of distinct objects. For example, uh, A can be the set of first three natural numbers, one, three, and two. So intentionally, I actually wrote it this way because for set, uh, the order does not matter. So one, two, and three and one three and two they are all same they are, they are same thing and we also say that we will denote a set um, using the capital letter for example capital a here um, another thing that we said is if we have to say that there is a member let's say two belongs to a two is a member of a then this is the notation that we use which is the notation for belongs to um, and we will write it this way. So this is our notational way of representing that two is a member of A or two belongs to A. Okay, great. Now, uh, let me uh, quickly introduce the concept of finite and infinite, infinite sets. So as the name suggests, so finite set means that it has finite number of elements in it. Now, examples as we have just seen that A is the set 1, 2, 3. And uh, this is a finite set because it has only three elements in it. Uh, one can construct a set, for example, B, which is the set of remainders when you divide by 5. So the remainders that you get, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You don't get 5 because that is equivalent to 0 when you are dividing by 5. So this is another finite set. And the total number of elements in this set is 5, as you can count. Okay? Good. Now, um, infinite set. So as far as the infinite set is concerned, um, again, as the name suggests, it has infinite number of elements okay so uh, the first thing that comes to mind is set of all natural numbers one two three all the way to infinity so it has infinite number of elements but this set is so popular that we denote it using the special notation called the scripted n as the special special notation Okay, set of all natural numbers. Similarly, one can construct a set of integers. And as you know, integer contains zero. And then one, two, all the way to infinity on the right hand side. And minus one, minus two, all the way to minus infinity on the left hand side. So this is the set of all integers. Similarly, one can construct the set of all rational numbers denoted by the scripted Q, set of all real numbers denoted by the scripted R, set of all positive integers denoted by Z plus, 
um, set of all positive real numbers denoted by R plus and so on. So these are all examples of infinite sets. Good. So um, next, I will introduce uh, two very specific set which are uh, very important in order to construct um, the set theoretic operation set as we'll see later. So the first is null set or empty set. Um, again, from the name as you can understand, it's a set without any element in it. Now, this is not obvious at this stage what we even mean by that, that I have a set, but I don't have a member into that set. Now, I will do, I'll say two things. The first one is uh, what I want to motivate here. It has the same connotation that way you thought zero as a number when you learned how to count. Zero doesn't add any value, but it was a number and it was needed so that we can complete all the arithmetic operations. Without zero, we don't know if five minus five is a number, right? Um, so it's the same thing that is needed here. So in order to complete set theoretic operations that we will see later, um, we need the concept of zero here. So null set gives us that particular concept of zero. That is number one. The number two is, let me motivate you through some examples, okay? So let's say I have, I'm trying to create a set um, of a set of real numbers whose um, square is less than zero. Now, uh, I'm saying that I already started collecting. So I already created uh, a capital letter, let's say um, C, um, but I don't know which member to be put into that set. And I can't because that's the way real numbers are defined. You cannot find any real number whose square is negative, right? So I have the set in that sense, but I don't have any member that I can put inside that set. So in that set, in that sense, this set is going to be a null set. Okay, so similarly, um, you can think of a set of, I don't know, integers, integers divisible, divisible by four, but not two. So nobody can deny that you already started, you have already had a plan to create such a set, you denoted it with a capital letter, but you are not finding an integer um, that is divisible by four, but not two, because four itself is divisible by two. So this is gonna be another null set, okay? Great, uh, and by the way, we will, uh, again, this, these are uh, concepts that require, um, uh, you know, revisit from multiple angles and we will get there, okay? So we, it is going to be needed when we come for the set theoretic operations, as I mentioned. The final thing, um, Sorry, the final thing that I will cover uh, today um, is the concept of uh, universal set. Now, the literature says that it's actually a set of all the elements. Now, if I just say that I'm trying to construct a set that contains all the elements it doesn't mean much what so does it mean that all the numbers and all the days of the week and etc so that's not actually what it means uh, because i'm not done yet so it means that set of all the elements for a given for a given context so it's a context specific so what it means is let's say that I am trying to solve a problem where only natural numbers are important. Um, and I know that only the natural numbers that I will encounter, then I can say safely that this set, this set of all the natural numbers, which we already denoted by N, so this is going to be my universal set. So uh, sometimes people denote universal set by U. What it means is that for that specific context, 
I am absolutely certain that no other numbers will arise. And therefore, whatever the number that I can encounter is going to belong to this particular set. So in that sense, N is universal for that particular context. Okay. So uh, again, we will see why this is important in order to um, do some set theoretic operations and um, uh, i will discuss those i'll start discussing those things in the in the next lecture um, and uh, it will be uh, apparent that why uh, null set and how null set and universal set play a very crucial role